Mr. President, as the new chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, 16 working days on the job, it is humbling to be parachuted late into the issue of re reimbursing doctors for Medicare services. And I intend to be brief here at the outset of this debate. Mr. President, all sides agree that the current system for paying doctors, known as the SGR, doesn't work well for seniors, the many gifted physicians who serve them, or taxpayers. Devised in 1997, the SGR sets an annual cost target for Medicare physician payments, and it is honored more in the breach than in the observance. When the SGR isn't met, the Congress says, that's okay, we'll just apply a patch and we'll punt. Patch it up and let that SGR limp along just as it has year after year after year. And Mr. President and colleagues, there have now been 16 of these patches, 16. And every senator that I talk to says that that just defies common sense. And it seems bizarre even by beltway standards. The cost of the patches now resembles the cost of the full repeal. Now, to his great credit, the majority leader, Senator Reid, has repeatedly said that his first choice for dealing with this issue is to finally repeal the SGR. And Mr. President, now is the ideal time for repealing SGR. The cost of full repeal is far less than anticipated. Thoughtful bipartisan work has been done in the House and the Senate on repeal and replace. And leading advocates for seniors and their doctors want to replace the status quo with real reform. So as an alternative to the flawed status quo, an SGR patch number 17, this afternoon, I will make two unanimous consent requests so that the Senate is allowed to have a choice, specifically a vote on a proposal to permanently repeal and replace the SGR and also to fund the health care extenders. Now I'll wrap up by briefly describing this proposal. Its essence, Mr. President, is to close two chapters of federal budget fiction. Since the SGR is just pretending that Congress will hold the line on Medicare spending, I believe it's time to end this fiction and wipe SGR off the books. And for balance, I'm going to propose ending another piece of budget fiction, specifically the overseas contingency operations known as OCO and the spending on wars that are winding down. This too, Mr. President, is fiction. As former Republican Senator John Kyle said, a conservative by anybody's calculation, Senator Kyle said during a previous SGR debate, let's use war savings for one last time to wipe out the debt Congress has built up by overriding reductions in payment to doctors. And from that point on, war savings would only be used for defense. So there you have my proposal, Mr. President. Truth in budgeting all around. Wipe the slate clean on Medicare so you can support seniors and their doctors and move forward with real reforms along the bipartisan lines the House and Senate has already agreed to. I would add that if the Congress took the action I just proposed, Mr. President, it could go further and address the health extenders. Unlike the SGR, these are real programs, helping, for example, vulnerable low-income seniors, rural communities, 
and seniors who need a variety of therapies. Each one of those has strong bipartisan support. This too could be addressed in a fiscally responsible manner. A big chunk of the cost of 10 years worth of these extenders could be addressed with savings of the one year patch. So Mr. President, here's my closing. A lot of good work has gone into a bipartisan, bicameral reform plan that finally repeals and replaces the SGR. I would just say to my colleagues, doesn't that deserve a vote? If my unanimous consent is accepted, we would have that vote. And at this time, as President, I ask unanimous consent that notwithstanding the previous order with respect to H.R. 4302, following disposition of the Owens nomination, when the Senate resumes legislative session, the Senate proceed to the consideration of calendar 336, S2157, that following the reporting of the bill, the bill be read a third time, and the Senate proceed to vote on passage of the bill with no intervening action or debate, and that upon disposition of the bill, the Senate resume consideration of H.R. 4302, as would be uh, provided under the previous order.